Hello and welcome, I'm Rick the Pilot Teacher and today we're going to be talking about how you learn to talk to air traffic control and other pilots. If you are a student pilot or thinking of becoming a pilot, this is an area that can really, really hamper and slow down your training and put the fear of God into you when pressing that microphone. So today we are going to talk about how you can overcome talking to air traffic control. So many decades ago when I was first learning to fly, I had a terrible fear of keying that microphone and talking to air traffic control. Where I was learning to fly, it was right next to a major airport. That major airport had a lot of big iron flying overhead. And the fear of me keying that mic and saying something wrong or stupid was just hampering my flying. It was it, it really slowed me down. So there's two things I'm gonna tell you about today that overcame my fear and will really, really help you if you are starting to learn to fly um, because it is very common. I see a lot of students that are struggling and with this kind of plateau, it slows down your training, which costs you time and costs you money. So tip number one that I've got is to go and visit the control tower of the local airport where you are learning to fly. If it's a busy airport and they have um, and a radar approach control, or also known as a TRACON, that's even better. If not, uh, that's kind of part two of this. You can kind of figure out how to go to your nearest busy international airport and go and see a radar controller. But step one is to go and visit the tower of your local airport where you are training. And there's the easiest way to do this is to give them a call. And if you are not sure of how you can get hold of the number there, ask around your school, they may have it. If not, uh, if you're flying in the US, look in the uh, AFD, the airport facility directory. That will list the phone number for the uh, airport there. The other way you can do it is if you still can't find it there, if you go onto skyvector.com, just type in the uh, identifier for the airport like we have here, bring up the information, and scroll down until you find the telephone number for the tower. They're usually always in there, and then you can just call them up, ask to speak to the um, the manager, and just say, hey, I'm a student over at XYZ Flight School. Um, can I come for a visit to have a look at the tower and see what you guys do? And that way then, you can go and spend some time with the tower, talk with them, find out what they see students struggle with in terms of the radio and where they think that you can concentrate your efforts you can go and see how the traffic pattern works how the traffic funnels into the airport and how the traffic funnels out of the airport um, a lot of people sometimes have this fear that the person sitting on the other end of that radio is going to shout at them and jump up and down if they make a mistake <laughs> it's not the case i had that fear i thought air traffic control is this big scary monster and when I got there and met them they were so nice they were so so nice and it put my fears of keying that microphone completely to bed um, so definitely go and visit the tower the second part of tip number one is to go visit the TRACOM which is the terminal radar approach control and basically that is where um, you go to a bigger airport that like an international airport it's got a lot of heavy iron coming into it and try and get a visit arranged so that you can go see the TRACON controllers and also the tower at the busy airport too, because it's really cool. And basically what it is, is these are the controllers that are sitting there looking at their radar screen, funneling in the big iron from way, way out into the airport and then also funneling the big iron out of the airport. And it's really cool. I did this and I spent, uh, I think it's about six hours one Sunday afternoon, sat right next to the uh, Tracon controller when it was back in the UK he gave me a headset told me to just stay quiet and I sat there and I I basically mirrored what they were doing for an entire afternoon they told me how all the system works how they get all the aircraft into certain areas to funnel down for the ILS they showed me how all they get the aircraft going out into different directions depending on what their routing is they told me about when I need to be talking to them versus talking to tower or if I'm on tower and I'm going out, how do I switch over? When do I switch over? And again, it was a really, really eye-opening experience that 
really helped cure my fear because every time after that that I keyed that button, um, I knew kind of who the people were that I'd talking to. They weren't just some voice that appeared after I spoke to them. Um, and sometimes it's quite cool because I actually got the tower controller and the uh, Tracon controller that showed me around. So it's kind of nice. I was able to instantly relax when I had them and I had a you know, quick conversation over the radio as to how things were. And it was really, really cool. So tip number one is go and see your local tower and try and go and see a Tracon controller. It was a great, great turning point in my um, flight training. And if you're struggling, definitely that is step one. Okay, so tip number two is software-based training aids. Now, when I was learning so many decades ago, um, software-based training was just in its infancy. And this was the second thing that I did that was actually recommended to me by one of the air traffic controllers. And it was a communications training back then it was a CD we weren't even into DVDs yet um, and basically it went through scenarios on the computer and it was you know how to taxi out how to uh, line up how to take off how to fly a circuit how to fly across country and it was all the kind of calls that you would do during that flight now back then it was very rudimentary it was a this is what you'll say, this is what you'll say, this is what you'll say. And basically, you just ha kind of had to make notes and just repeat it yourself. Today, we have a whole different, incredible array of software um, training tools for all kinds of flight training. But the one that I'm talking about today that I love, I've been playing with, and it's been really, really recommended, is called AR Sim by Plain English. So we're going to go and have a bit of an in-depth look into this as to why I love it and why I've actually been <laughs> learning some myself because I've been flying 20 years now. Um, I've obviously picked up some bad habits because the way that I would talk on the radio is a little bit different to what AR Sim says I should. So basically, what is AR Sim? AR Sim is basically it's an, an AI software-based training tool. And this is cool because this one is interactive. It is two-way. It was basically designed and coded and built by pilots for pilots because they were finding they were struggling. And this was a great tool that they've come up with and is actually doing really well. Um, I was looking at their, their history of it and they've been getting some really good funding and they're now being picked up by a lot of big flight companies and I think they've even just been taken on by the United States Air Force to help train their pilots. So it's not just a little crappy software, this is actually a serious training tool and it's really good and you're going to see why. So it's a, it's kind of an app based tool, it's either you can use it for uh, Apple, for Android and there's also a web version too. Um, so you can use it anywhere and that's the convenience of it. You can train and practice if you're sitting on the can, if you are sitting on the train commuting, you can put your headset in and you can just kind of practice going over the stuff. It's really, really cool. If you get to work, log in from uh, your web server when you have a 10 minute break and just, again, practice. It's cool because it's got a seven day trial so you can go and test it out, test all the features and then if you like it, then you can purchase it and there's different bottles. Um, it works for either FAA or for EASA training. So if you are flying in Europe, definitely go take a look at this too. You just select the uh, the different settings within it. It works for any kind of flight training or any kind of aircraft. So if you are a student pilot, it's gonna work great for you. If you're a private pilot, it's gonna work great for you as a refresher. If you are a seasoned pilot, and you are changing the industry, like let's say you've been flying out in the bush for a while and you now wanna go and fly, um, say, EMS or police in a busy urban environment, it's a good way for you to learn how to talk because if you've been flying in the bush for 20 years, um, I can tell you now, your radio skills are not gonna be made in the par of flying around a busy urban environment. So it's great for that too. So the main benefit with AR Sim is, like I said, it's interactive. It provides you instant feedback as to how you are doing in terms of repeating the freeze. Um, so we're going to go and take a look at this now, and we're going to go and kind of set it all up and see what it's all about. So I'm coming to the web-based app here, just so it makes it easier. I can screenshot it for you and you can see. So basically what we're going to do now is we're going to go and put in 
uh, register an account, and this is going to give us our seven day free trial. The one thing that I really love about AR Sim is you can tailor it to suit your exact training environment. And you can do that by putting in your tail number and selecting the airport that you are training at. So here is where you can select whether you're going to be um, flying in Europe or the US, basically just by coming here and selecting the FAA or the ICAO. ICAO, yeah, it's still in beta, but it, from what I've seen, it does work very well. The other thing that I really like about this is this section here. You can basically set up how you want the voice coming back to you to sound, um, which is really handy because if, if English isn't your first language and let's say you're training in India, you can come and select a voice that is done by somebody who is um, of different nationalities. So it, it's fantastic. You can go up and set up exactly to tailor it, exactly to how you're going to be training so it makes it even more realistic. And then when you are listening to it, the way that they pronounce the um, communications back and forth is going to be far more realistic than, let's say you're training in India and you get a British guy or an American woman um, telling you your instructions when you're going to be learning in India. So if you have somebody that's talking to you with an Indian accent, it makes it far more realistic. And that's how you can set it up just here. It's really, really cool. Okay, so when you first come into the AR Sim uh, interface, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on the computer, um, you've got these tabs down the bottom, Trainer, Basics, VFR, IFR, and Fly. Now, you basically, you wanna start off with the basics if you are brand new to becoming a pilot. Uh, this is gonna teach you how to start pronunciating things properly. Um, me being a Brit, <laughs> yeah, my pronunciation was quite a bit different when I was in the US. Um, but basically each bit is split up into sections and lessons. So here we are in the basics tab. Uh, basically you've got all your different kind of categories, numbers, vocabulary, phrases. So we just start on numbers, go through one digit numbers, two digit numbers, three digit numbers. So let's look at the ones. Let's pick one that I know is a little different. So basically say the given number. Microphone's flashing at you. Three. Now, <laughs> I didn't get anything on my feedback. Show my feedback. Correct, it'll be green. Red, it's incorrect. So it should be pronounced tree. Let's try that again. Tree. There we are, I've got proper feedback now. So, tree, correct. That's how this works. Okay, so let's go and have a look at the VFR tab. Um, we're gonna practice something that's a little bit more in depth. Um, so taxiing out, let's have a look at that. Let's have a look. Uh, request departure, direction, simple instructions. So here we have, we've got the map of Hillsborough Airport. Call sign is November 27, Yankee Sierra. We've got ADIS is information Quebec. Uh, basically, it's just going to tell us what it wants us to do at the bottom here. So if we want to listen to the ADIS, press the arrow. If we don't want to listen to the ADIS in full, we can skip through by pressing the arrow again. Hillsborough Airport Information Quebec. Weather at 1. Okay, so let's say we've listened to the ADIS. You're now at HAA ramp. Contact Hillsborough Ground to request clearance to taxi for VFR flight north departure. So if you're still new and you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure hit the uh, question mark and again it's going to give us a situation what you want to do air traffic control is listening for your request so it's going to be something along the lines of here so hillsborough ground november 27 yankee sierra at hea ramp ready to taxi via far to the north with information quebec so let's have a look hillsborough grounds november 27 yankee sierra at hea ramp Ready for taxi, VFR flight, north departure, information, Quebec. Ooh, so I've got a little bit of improvement to do. So, that was obviously my accent there, Hillsborough Ground. Um, I think it's pronounced Hillsborough. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been there. Uh, my accent's coming in here. And 
view far to the north. So it's telling me something that I missed or was incorrect. So it's giving me an 80%. So this is where the app works wonders because it's giving you the instant feedback. So let's go try that again. <clears throat> Hillsborough Ground, it's November 2-7, Yankee Sierra with Information Quebec at the HA8 ramp, ready to taxi for VFR flight to the north. Yeah, 100%. Let's have a look. Two seven Yankee Sierra. So even though I gave some of the information in a little bit of a different order, the AI is working to figure out if what I said is pronounced right, the information is correct, and it's given me a hundred percent. So now November two seven Yankee Sierra, Hillsboro Ground, runway two, taxi via Bravo five. November 27, Yankee Sierra, Hillsboro Ground, Runway 2, Taxi via Bravo 5. So there we have, that is ATC coming back to us. So now we've practiced giving our request and it's also giving us what we would expect to hear back from the tower controller. So this is how the AI system of AR Sim works and it is fantastic. It works really, really well. Not only do you get to practice what you're going to be um, saying, but you're also going to get familiar with what is going to be coming back. So in addition to the AR Sim software, you can also get their manual, which kind of comes along hand in hand. And uh, basically you can just add it to your cart when you go to check out and you can either get a hard copy or just a PDF, uh, which is nice if you want it just on your phone or your iPad. It's a really, really good addition. And basically what it's going to do, uh, it gets you thinking about the scenarios that you are talking to a traffic control with. So the traffic pattern, um, approach, departure. Um, it gets your head in understanding so that it's it helps you learn why you are talking like you are. Um, so it's a really good addition that you can put in with your software and it makes you just understand the system. And once you understand the system, that penny will drop one day and you can just go from airport to airport to airport and never be um, nervous or anxious about going to, say, a busy airport that you've never been to before. So long as you've got the frequencies, you know where you are, you definitely know who you are, you know where you're going. Once you know the system behind it, it's like, okay, da 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 da, da. Yeah, this is my response. You practice it in your head before you go, practice it on your head before you get to talking to that person, and it allows you to have so much more confidence. And that is what this software is doing, is it's building your confidence so that when you get in that aircraft, it just rolls off your tongue, and you'll get to a certain point where you don't even think about it anymore. You just, off it goes. Um, and the confidence is what prevents you I'm hesitating. So once you're confident on the radio, you have so much more enjoyable flights. And that is what this software does. So the main reason why I'm kind of recommending this to all of you new pilots is that it's a great tool to use in your own time. And you can use this way before you become a pilot. Um, like it's a, it's a perfect present. Um, let's say you've got a birthday coming up or if it's Father's Day coming up, Christmas coming up, you can ask for this from your spouse, family, friends, whoever. And if you are getting at Christmas and you're going to start flight training in July, you can start working through this because once you've learnt it, it's in your head. And if you wait until you start training, it's going to slow you down because you're like, uh, you're going to be fumbling around, you can't think, and then it's, you're already trying to figure out how to fly the damn aircraft in the first place. Now you've got to talk to somebody else on the radio. Um, it's easy to get into that comfort zone of just the instructor's going to do it all, but now you've got to do it. Um, yeah, so this is really good that you can use this and do it on your own time. Like I said, you can sit on the can on your phone and practice. You can sit on the train, you can sit on the bus. You can sit and do it anywhere. It, you can do it on your own time and it's it's really, really good. You can get it way ahead of time, like I just mentioned, and just be ready for flight training. And, and because of that, if you get it ahead of time and you're already up to speed, you're gonna be <laughs> way ahead. And even setting it up, if you call the school and 
there's one training aircraft if it's a small school and there's just one training aircraft you can ask the school ahead of time what that registration is so then you can set this up with your home airport and with the aircraft and then you're going to be practicing and practicing and practicing so even on day one of your first lesson um you could technically give it a try talking to a traffic control and your instructor will be like nice nice so a prepared student is going to progress so much faster so the other cool thing uh, about this if you are thinking of purchasing this uh, i reached out to plain english got in touch with them told them what i've been doing because i'm such a good fan of this i love it um, i want to promote products that um, i've personally used tried i've seen lots of other people try and um, so if you use the code pilots teach you'll get 10 percent off um, so it makes it even cheaper so the other cool thing about this is if you're going through the faa wings program this actually works towards giving you credits which is nice because um, everything you can do to get the credits really really helps with your your training it also helps with your resume as you're going through too um, shows you're kind of a committed pilot a safe pilot um, so now yeah AL Sim has been awarded the uh, wings accreditation so that is another thing that you can add and another reason why it's just a great piece of training material so the AR sim is just one of the ways in which you can improve your training as a pilot and improving your training especially ahead of time is helping you to save time and money if you want to know over a hundred other ways in which you can learn to save money at flight training go check out pilotteacher.com i've got a course there that i've designed specifically for you to help you get more money back from your training to either make it cheaper or to allow you to do further training like if you want to get a multi-engine endorsement or if you want to go and get your instrument uh, rating things like that so go check out pilotteacher.com go check out plain english's ar sim um, and just get practicing if you can get this before you start flight school or flight training whichever you're going to do helicopter airplane if you're going to go for a private license if you're going to go all the way through professional pilot program this has got so much training for everybody on board and by doing so it's going to make you better it's going to make you more confident and being more confident means you're going to progress faster save money and it's a great great training tool um, if i was going through flight school now this is going to be one of my first purchases because i can start practicing before i get in that aircraft and once i'm in there i'm already ahead of the game so go get yourself ar sim coupon code pilot teach 10 percent off also go check out pilotteacher.com and get studying to talk to that scary person on the end of the radio trust me they're not scary they're just normal human beings and one of the things that they said to me which really stuck with me is without pilots they don't have a job so they are there to help you so just go get yourself a r sim get practicing head over to pilot teacher get your course and you will be off to the races i'll see you next time